AMD stock had an amazing day today with the semiconductor giant up over 9% in one day and about 1% after hours. Today, I want to take a closer look at what are some of the bullish news impacting the semiconductor market. And I also want to take a closer look at AMD's and Nvidia's valuation at the moment. So let's get started with today's episode. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. All right, so like I mentioned at the intro, we can see AMD had a great day. And as most of you know, NVIDIA is my number one position in my overall portfolio, but the second is AMD. Uh, right now, the stock was up 9%, and after hours, the stock is up nearly 2%. So we can see AMD is a little bit different compared to its competitors today. NVIDIA was only up about 2%, which is still a great day. And I do believe Intel was also up only about, yep, Intel was up roughly 2.5%. So there are some bullish news, in my opinion, that's impacting the overall semiconductor market. But for AMD and NVIDIA, it has to deal with two letters, AI. More importantly, with AMD, it has to deal with the MI300. So there were two great reports that came out today here on TrendForce. And TrendForce is a great free website that I use a lot um, to kind of collect a lot of information. And the first report, we're taking a closer look at global server shipments are expected to increase by about 2% in 2024, with AI servers accounting for around 12.1%. For those that are familiar, the AI servers are servers that tend to have a GPU or some form of accelerator where normal servers or global uh, traditional servers just tend to have a CPU. And AI servers historically have only been single digits where now we are seeing that for 2024, AI servers are expected to be double digits. So that means a lot of more GPUs being sold, which bodes well for NVIDIA, but more importantly for AMD, as AMD is such a small player, it does seem like right now investors are getting very, very excited about the potential growth of the MI300 and what it can do to AMD's revenue, very similar to how we've seen NVIDIA's revenue grow dramatically thanks to their GPUs. Before we go any further, I just want to say thank you all for the amazing support we are getting in this channel. We're closing in to 40,000 subs. That is insane. So if you haven't and you are enjoying the content, make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. Finally, if you want to support this channel a little bit more, check out my special offer at fool.com slash Jose. Now back to today's episode. So throughout the article, we also see talks about different types of AI server makers, but I only want to take a closer look at Supermicro as that is one that gets followed pretty heavily here in the semiconductor space. So Supermicro is expected to see their server shipment growth rates remain flat year over year. And you might be wondering, Jose, what's going on? Why are server their server shipments expected to be flat? Isn't this company growing at fast levels? Yes, and like I mentioned earlier on, there's two types of servers. There's AI servers and just your traditional compute uh, servers which are mainly just CPU focused. Right now Supermicro is focusing on the AI server growth this year with the potential to double its shipments in this segment and thank thankfully for Supermicro the AI server is the one with the most revenue with the most margins and the one seeing the most growth. So Supermicro's high-end AI servers are focused mainly on second-tier data centers in Europe and the United States, such as companies as, as CoreWeave and Tesla. And the company is aggressively expanding its efforts to secure AI orders from clients, including Apple and Meta. And Apple is a very interesting player, right? One that we haven't heard much in the AI market. And this is one that I'm going to do an episode later on today or tomorrow, taking a closer look at Apple. Apple and their AI endeavors that we've heard since their last earnings call. But overall, it does seem like the market is going to be mainly driven by North America cloud data centers, obviously the big four players here. Um, and that's pretty much going to be driven by AI servers. So obviously, this great news bodes well for both AMD and NVIDIA, as it does mean they're going to continue to see more server shipments, AI server shipments this year, which means more GPUs being sold overall, which means more revenue 
revenue for both these players. Now, there was another article here in TrendForce talking about the high-end server demand um, and kind of breaking it down from North America and how North America top four cloud server providers, Microsoft, Google, AWS, and Meta are pretty much ruling 60% of the overall AI server market. So that's why it's very important to follow these four companies in form of CapEx because they are leading the AI. These are the big buyers of AI servers right now. CoreWeave is about 6.4 and the others are roughly 25.3. I'm pretty sure that, that includes a lot of the C, uh, Chinese cloud server providers, Oracle, and some other small players as well. Two important notes here that I found pretty interesting for investors. First, they do mention that Microsoft is expected to be the most enthusiastic adopter of AMD's high-end GPU MI300 solution in 2024. And if we do see, Microsoft is also going to be the biggest buyer of AI servers. So so overall, this does could seem like a very, very bullish note for AMD as they are just getting ramping up into their MI300X GPU platform. Now, the other thing that they talk about is the balance and cost performance that NVIDIA is going to be very aggressive in pricing for the H200, aligning it closely with the H100 to kind of appeal the cloud server providers to purchase the H200, even though the H100 came out less than a year and a half ago, I want to say. So interesting notes for both those companies, AMD and NVIDIA, but we can see a lot more bullish notes right now for AMD. And I do believe this is causing a nice run up on the stock. Now, some things that maybe investors want to consider are insider selling. Normally, I don't care about this, um, but definitely just want to bring up the information to others. The CEO did sell some shares of AMD on February 21st at roughly $162. Not much. Uh, Lisa Su still holds over 3 million shares. She sold roughly 120, 130,000 shares. Nothing compared to the, around, um, the amount of numbers that she has right now. The other thing is we did see a lot of NVIDIA directors, nowhere in the top line, it was pretty much just directors that sold out of their positions at the high, at the high 700s and 800s. These, again, very similar to AMD. They weren't anything crazy compared to their overall positions, but they were just interesting to, again, I just want to let you guys know what's happening around here with NVIDIA. This is something that I could care less about. And like I mentioned, most sales were nothing compared to what these directors own. And most of them were sold at either high 700s or the low 800s. So maybe those are the times to take profits here for NVIDIA. Personally, I'm not going to do that though. Now, before we take a closer look at valuations, we did get some bullish sentiment from a Bank of America analyst, security analyst. They mentioned that they believe NVIDIA and AMD will benefit from the gaming upcycle, which is still strong. And I do want to say this is probably better for AMD than NVIDIA, as AMD still is very heavily dependent on its consumer market based on total revenue, where NVIDIA right now, the only thing that matters for it is the data center market. The firm reiterate the buy rating for both NVIDIA and AMD with significant growth ahead for the data center accelerator market. Obviously, that's bullish for both players. This firm has a price target of 925 for NVIDIA and 195 for AMD, which is what the stock hit pretty much after hours. Now, in forms of valuations, first, I want to look at forward PE ratio. Obviously, NVIDIA in the next 12 months looks cheap um, compared to AMD at 32.26, uh, AMD at 52.91. Now, if we take a closer look at forward one year, NVIDIA is still cheap, but AMD looks a lot cheaper at 35. I do believe if AMD can really outperform on the MI300X in the next 24 months, it's going to be very, very, it's, it's very acceptable at these levels. That's if you want to think of this investment in a two-year time frame. Now, if you're looking to see how the valuation is in a one-year time frame, I do believe AMD is pretty expensive, but I do, we, we have seen that AMD is more like sandbagging those MI300 numbers, and those numbers can get a lot better, a lot, um, very quickly. Um, which can obviously push the stock price even higher. So AMD right now sitting at a market cap of $300 billion. I don't think it deserves a trillion dollar market valuation, but maybe some investors might think that otherwise. Um, maybe in the future, a $500 billion but I personally don't see this being a trillion dollar company right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care, have a good day, and see you next time.